Hey, 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 it's Miss Johnson here with your second notes video for Unit 7. Today we're going to be talking about permutations. The example up at the top of your page has to do with a manager assigning two different people to two different positions at a coffee shop. So there's three different people he can choose from, Katie, Bob, and Alicia, and one person needs to work at the counter, one person needs to work at the drive through window. So we need to figure out how many possibilities are there for the manager to assign them. We're going to make a list here. Um, one of our options is to have Katie at the counter and Bob at the drive thru We could also have Katie at the counter and Alicia at the drive thru We could also have Bob at the counter and Alicia at the drive thru or Bob at the counter and Katie at the drive thru We could also have Alicia at the counter and Katie at the drive thru or Alicia at the counter and Bob at the drive through Those are our different possibilities for assigning those two jobs, and we need to count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's six different arrangements for placing the two employees into those two positions, okay? Each one of those arrangements is called a permutation. Permutation, a permutation is when we look at a group of objects and the or people and they're arranged in a certain order each arrangement is called a permutation so arranging objects in a certain order okay certain order is the key there order is important order makes a difference for instance if we have a b and b a those are two different permutations even though they're the same letters they're in different orders so they're two different things and we have to count them both as a different arrangement let's take a look at some examples we're going to be using that concept of factorial that we talked a lot about yesterday that's going to come up a lot in permutations um, number two on your notes we're looking at how many different arrangements are there in of the letters in the word triangle so first let's see if we can figure out how many letters there are so here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. That means there's eight spots that I have to fill. So this is very similar to what we did yesterday. Okay. Now I'm using all of those letters. So there's eight different options that I can put in the first spot. Once I use one of those options, then there's only seven left, then six, then five, then four, three, two, and one. And think back to yesterday, this was the same thing as 8 factorial. If I calculate 8 factorial, I get 40,320 different arrangements of the letters. Okay, um, So there's 40,320 different ways that I can arrange the letters in the word triangle. Now, let's take a look at arranging the letters in the word triangle if I make the first letter A. So again, there's eight letters, but I'm going to guarantee that the first letter is A. Okay? There's only one A in the word, so there's only one way that I can put A in that spot. Okay? There's only one way that I can put A in that spot. The rest of the letters are fair game. So once I get to the second spot, then there's seven options there because I've already used the A. Then the third spot, there's six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Okay, so if I calculate this out, it's one times all of those options. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. What this ends up being is just seven factorial. Okay, because multiplying by 1 at the beginning is not going to change our answer. We're going to have 7 factorial. And when I put that into my calculator, 7 factorial is equal to 5,040 different arrangements. So there's 5,040 different ways I can arrange those letters if the first letter has to be A. Let's look at number 4. So we're talking about the number of different license plates that can be made up in the state of Minnesota. Um, one or three of those characters in the license plate have to be letters and three of them have to be numbers. 
okay? So if I think about putting the letters here, I have a letter, a letter, and a letter. There's 26 different letters that I can choose from because there's 26 letters in the alphabet and we use them all. So if I put 26 into each of those spots and the letters are allowed to repeat, you could have a license plate that says AAA. Okay, so if I put 26 into each of those spots, then for the numbers, there's 10 different digits. There's the digits zero through nine. So there's 10 different digits that could go into each of those spots. And again, they're allowed to repeat. So I could have 10 digits there, 10 digits there, 10 digits there. There's 10 options for each of those spots. If I multiply those all together, I end up with 17,576,000 different license plates. Okay, and each one of them is a permutation because if I had the license plate 123CBA, even though the characters are the same, it's different from that one. That makes it a permutation because the order is important. Now we have a formula for calculating permutations. If we look at that formula and look at the notation, our notation for this is NPR. N is the number of objects that we have to choose from. R is the number that we're going to use because sometimes we don't use all of them. Sometimes we only use some of them. Just like the example in the beginning, we had three people, but we only needed to use two of them because there were only two jobs. This is our formula. We end up with N factorial over the quantity of N minus R factorial. So let's look at putting that formula into practice. I want to evaluate 5P3, or the permutation of five objects taken three at a time. If I use that formula, that means I have 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. 5 factorial stays the same. 5 minus 3 is 2, so that's going to be over 2 factorial. If I write that all out, I have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on the top, and in the denominator, I have two times one, okay? Now, we can use our property of reducing fractions here. I know that two divided by two is gonna be one, so I can actually cancel it, okay? One divided by one doesn't do anything, it's still one, so I can cancel that as well. So all I'm left with here is actually five times four times three, which ends up being 60. So there's 60 different permutations if you have five objects and you're choosing three of them. Why don't you pause the video and take a second to look at number six. Calculate out the permutation of seven objects taken two at a time. Let's jump to number seven. In number seven, we're looking at assigning 10 finalists to the gold, silver, and bronze medals of the Olympics. So we're looking at figure skating here. This means I have 10 different people to choose from and I'm choosing three of them because gold, silver, and bronze. And the order matters because getting a gold medal is different than getting a silver medal and it's different than getting a bronze medal. So this is a permutation because order matters. If I plug that into the formula, I have 10 factorial over 10 minus three factorial which is also 10 factorial over 7 factorial. I can write that all out, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, and so on. The denominator is going to be 7 factorial. And again, 7 over 7 cancels out because 7 divided by 7 is 1. 6 over 6 cancels out. 5 over 5, 4 over 4, and so on. I can get rid of all of these. So all I'm left with is 10 times 9 times 8, which is equal to 720 different ways that those skaters could win the medals. Let's take a look at number 8. In number 8, it says a newspaper has 9 reporters and we're covering 4 stories. How many different ways can we calculate that? So I have nine choices and I'm assigning four of them. So if I plug that into my permutations formula, 
That's 9 factorial over 9 minus 4 factorial. That's the same thing as 9 factorial over 5 factorial, which is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The denominator is going to be 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And again, anything over itself cancels. So all I'm left with here is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, which is equal to 3,024 ways. Why don't you pause the video at this time and see if you can work on number 9. Calculate out the permutations in number 9. So then let's talk about what happens if we have repetitions, because sometimes there's things in there that are not unique. We have two things that are the same. Okay? If I'm looking at the permutation of n objects where things are common, I need to divide out those things that are common. So let's say I have n objects, but p and q are alike. There's p objects and there's q objects. I'm going to divide by p factorial and q factorial. Let's look at how that might change our answer. In number 10, we're looking at how many different ways can we arrange the letters in the word Mississippi. The first thing I need to know is how many letters are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 letters, but they're not all unique. They're not all different. So I have to look at what's in common. One of the letters that's in common are the I's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. So there's four I's. I also have S's. One, two, three, four. There's four S's. And I have the two P's. Okay, so let's look at what that does for us. I'm going to have 11 factorial different combinations, but I have to divide out the, the ones that are the same. So I'm going to divide by four factorial for the I's. 4 factorial for the s's, and 2 factorial for the p's. If I calculate all that out and write it all out, I end up with 34,650 ways. Okay, so now why don't you take a second, pause the video, and you can move on to number 11 and see if you can answer that question. When you're finished answering number 11, don't forget to go back to Schoology and take the quiz. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow.